I declare that the 576th Convocation of McMaster University for the conferring of degrees is now in session. Please be seated. Good morning. I am Dr. Doug Welch, Vice Provost and Dean of Graduate Studies. This morning I have the great pleasure of welcoming all of you, graduates and guests to this convocation ceremony. Before we start our formal program, may I ask everyone in the hall to switch off any electronic device that may ring or beep during the ceremony. I would like to start by recognizing and acknowledging that we meet today on the traditional territories of the Mississauga and Haudenosaunee nations and within the lands protected by the Dish with One Spoon Wampum Agreement. I would also like to take this opportunity to acknowledge some of the notable leaders joining me on stage today. Dr. Suzanne Labarge, Chancellor. Dr. Patrick Dean, President and Vice Chancellor. Dr. David Farrar, Provost and Vice President Academic in today's Master of Ceremonies. Ms. Mary Williams, Vice President, University Advancement. Faculty Deans, Drs. Ken Cruikshank and Jeremiah Hurley. Associate and Assistant Vice Presidents, Associate Deans, Chairs, Directors, Faculty Members, and Honored Guests. I would like to highlight a few of the graduate-related uh, developments in this particular group of faculties this year. We have the very, in the Faculty of Business, we have the very first EMBA graduating class of 20 students. They started in August 2016 and finished in September 2017. We have the first graduate from the Accounting and Financial Management Services field of our PhD in Business, uh, in business Administration degree. In Social Science, in social sciences, we have three new programs, a new PhD program in labor studies, and the Department of Health, Aging, and Society. There are two new PhD programs, one in health studies, and the second in social gerontology. And finally, in humanities, this convocation includes the first graduate of the PhD program in French, and like I'd also like to note that a recent graduate, Dr. Vin Nguyen, who gained her PhD in English and Cultural Studies in 2015, is the winner of the 2017 Charles, uh, John Charles Polanyi Prize in Literature. I would now like to call upon our Chancellor, Dr. Suzanne Labarge, to make her own welcoming remarks. Welcome, honored guests, staff, faculty, families, friends, and most importantly, graduates. This is an exciting day for all of you who are graduating today, as well as for all those people who have supported you and stood behind you, and in many cases, have had a key role in you being here today. You have achieved a great deal to get here, and you should all be very proud of your success and looking forward to what the future might bring. Congratulations, and enjoy the ceremony. I'm David Farrar. I'm the Provost and Vice President Academic of the University, and I have the great pleasure of being your Master of Ceremonies this morning. I would now like to introduce Dr. Patrick Dean, our President and Vice Chancellor, who will be presenting the honorary degree recipient.
Chancellor Labarge, by the authority of the Senate of McMaster University, I have the honor to present David Lazzarato. David Lazzarato is a member of the McMaster family, a committed volunteer and an executive with a track record of exceptional financial management in technology-related companies. Born and raised in Hamilton, Mr. Lazzarato earned his Bachelor of Commerce degree from McMaster University in 1979, and then his Chartered Accountant, or CA, designation in 1981. He was named a Fellow of the Institute of Chartered Accountants in 2006. Mr. Lazzarato began his career as an accountant with Thorne Ernst & Winnie, a predecessor firm of KPMG, working out of Hamilton, Toronto, and Cleveland. From there, Mr. Lazzarato worked for a series of technology and communications companies in progressively more senior financial roles. He was the controller for CAE Inc., a global leader in developing and manufacturing simulation training technologies from 1988 to 1990, before moving to CAE Electronics, where he served as the senior vice president and chief financial officer for four years. He was the controller for BCE Inc., one of Canada's largest and most prestigious companies, and then became senior vice president and CFO for Bell Mobility. Mr. Lazzarato joined Allstream in 1999 as the company's executive vice president and CFO, leading the company through one of the largest restructuring transactions in Canadian history before taking on the role of chief corporate officer with MTS, Manitoba Telecom Services. In 2005, Mr. Lazzarato joined Alliance Atlantis Communications, Inc as Executive Vice President and CFO, as well as the Chairman of Motion Picture Distribution. Two years later, he became the Chief Executive Officer of Craig Wireless Systems, or CWS, a company that delivers services based on portable and mobile applications that utilize wireless technology. The company holds or leases licenses around the world, including in British Columbia, Manitoba, California, Greece, Norway, and New Zealand. Mr. Lazzarato subsequently worked as an independent consultant before returning to the BCE organization as a senior vice president with Bell Canada. He retired in 2011. As a volunteer, Mr. Lazzarato has been the vice chair of the boards of directors for the Trillium Health Center Foundation in Mississauga and the Council of Chairs of Ontario Universities, and has recently joined the board of Hamilton Health Sciences. His most significant volunteer commitment, however, has been to his alma mater, McMaster University. Appointed by the McMaster Alumni Association to the university's board of governors in 2008, he served until 2016, with terms as the vice chair and then as chair. During his tenure, he also chaired the Finance Committee, the Human Resources Committee, the Audit Committee, and the President's Advisory Committee on the impact of the current economic situation. Chancellor Labarge, it is a privilege to present to you a McMaster alumnus whose career in corporate Canada and whose dedication to his alma mater as a volunteer have made him a worthy recipient of the degree Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa. I ask that you confer that degree upon Mr. David Lazzarato. David Lazzarato, by the authority of McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to confer upon you the degree Doctor of Laws Honoris Causa at McMaster University with all the rights and privileges pertaining to that degree. Congratulations. Thank you. 
I would now like to invite Dr. Lazzarato to deliver the convocation address. I like how that sounds. Thank you. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, President Dean, distinguished faculty, senior members of the administration, graduates, family and friends. I have to begin by saying I'm honored and humbled to receive this honorary degree. Thank you to all at McMaster for this honor. <clears throat> I also want to thank my parents, Chester and Marilyn, my wife Lori, my entire family, and our six kids, three of whom are, or will soon be, McMaster graduates. And they're all here today, and they all got good seats in the front. <laughs> Thank you. When I began as an undergraduate in the mid-1970s, I was going to be very happy to graduate with that Bachelor of Commerce degree I was studying for. Nowhere in my wildest dreams did I think of an honorary degree such as this. But here we are. In the next few minutes, I want to share a few observations and thoughts about McMaster and offer some perspectives for the graduates. McMaster was a university of approximately 10,000 people, 10,000 students back in my day, and had just recently added its health sciences faculty. Enrollment has risen to almost 30,000 today. Mac is Canada's most research intensive university with over $350 million of research income this year. And as we meet today, I can say that all graduates and I share a great honor. We are all degree recipients from one of the top 100 universities in the world. Mac was recently ranked 66th by the Shanghai Zhao Tong Academic Ranking of World Universities. Congratulations to McMaster and all involved. <clears throat> a few things that must have contributed to that ranking include, Mac has a number of diverse faculties that it believes are an essential element of providing students with a broad range of degree and learning opportunities. Mac also has a characteristic that many universities either don't have or it's not as evident as here at Mac, and that is the desire and the ability to adapt and change. As just one example of this, the President's Advisory Committee on the Impact of the Economic Crisis that I chaired in 2009 made 22 recommendations across four broad subject areas. The university began implementing the recommendations before we even issued the final report. I think that's a desire and an ability to adapt and change. As you know, health care is consistently the subject that ranks highest in priority among Canadian voters. And it's the sector that is the largest portion of the province of Ontario's annual spending. As an example that MAC proactively adapts its programs, McMaster has recently added a number of interdisciplinary programs related to health care. The faculties of business and health sciences are working together to offer three new programs, a master's in health management, a master's in global health, and a PhD in health policy. And together with health sciences and engineering, are offering a master's in e-health. It sounds like a perfect fit of employer and societal needs and the focus of our university to help with the supply of appropriately educated graduates to step up to the challenges in healthcare. Another interdisciplinary program that has been introduced is the Integrated Business and Humanities program, two of the faculties represented here today. In addition to disciplines typically included in a business education, it exposes students to responsible leadership and management tactics in our changing global economy and to sustainable business practices. Some of these are referred to as the softer skills, but make no mistake, these are just important as the harder skills and arguably more important as your careers progress. Now I want to talk specifically to the graduates, if I may. Wherever I have worked or volunteered, I have always thought of two things, what I was doing and how I was doing it. Um, 
regardless of all those companies President Dean mentioned I worked at and was involved in, no matter what I was doing, I could not have been successful without focusing on how I approached each situation and the people involved. Whatever you choose to do next, whether you join a company, whether you start your own company, whether you work in government or in a not-for-profit organization, ask yourself what kind of an environment do you want to work in and with what kind of people. Millennials and Gen Zs are often described as wanting a good work-life balance. You value passion about the work you do over earning the last possible dollar or two. You want to work somewhere that's transparent about the organization's strategy and results, and you want to be recognized for your contributions. If that or some variation of that is what you want, ask yourself how can you contribute to that type of an environment. Focus on the things you can control to be successful in the environment you are entering. Foundational elements of all high-functioning organizations are always integrity, respect, and trust. And all of you can bring all of those values and traits with you wherever you choose to go. You wouldn't expect anything less in the way of traits and values from your peers or your bosses, would you? You have spent more time doing projects and assignments in teams during your university life than I did when I was at Mac. And that has taught you better listening, communication, critical thinking, analytical, and time management skills as a result. All skills and experience that are invaluable as to how you do things in the future. Three more things you can control. The work ethic you bring to the job, how much you truly care about what you're doing in that job, and your desire to keep learning throughout your career. To see the how skills in action, look for role models that you see exhibit the skills and behavior that you value and work to emulate them. And never be afraid to ask people for advice. You can even learn from watching what I will refer to as bad role models. We all have seen them. Um, people who exhibit the opposite values and behaviors as to what you believe to be appropriate. I regularly think of all of my role models, even the ones I vowed never to work with again. Sometimes you learn the most from the people you don't want to emulate. In closing, you are inheriting our great world and are now going to share the responsibilities for how this world and our society works. If you exhibit the values and traits of integrity, respect, and trust, and the listening, communication, critical thinking, and teamwork skills you have learned, not only will you be successful in the careers ahead of you, but you will contribute to a more civil and sustainable society as well. I want to congratulate you I want to wish all of you every success throughout your careers. And again, I want to thank McMaster for this honorary degree given to me today and for the opportunity to speak to this graduating class. Thank you very much. Thank you very much, Dr. Lazzarato, and thank you for your comments. I think he's given you some very good words of wisdom, and I would say the success of his career would testify to what happens when you do apply them properly. But I also want to say that we talked about McMaster, and I think we have to remember that the quality of McMaster is not only reflected by virtue of the quality of our researchers, our professors, and the staff at the university, but by the people who help, the volunteers who've helped make this university what it is. And I've had the opportunity to deal with Dr. Lazzarato over the last number of years, and his devotion and contribution to this university has been substantial. And he's helped, as has everybody else, make it what it is, and for that we're truly grateful, and we are delighted to have been able to honor him today. Thank you, Dr. Lazzarato. Dr. Patrick Dean will now come forward to present the graduates to our Chancellor, for admission to their degrees.
Will the graduates please stand? Madam Chancellor, on behalf of McMaster University Senate, I present to you these candidates and those in absentia in order that you may confer the appropriate degrees upon them. And I bear witness that they are worthy and suitable. Graduands, by my authority and that of the McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to admit to those before me today and those in absentia to their individual degrees at McMaster University with all of the rights and privileges pertaining to those degrees. My sincere congratulations to you all. Please be seated. Graduates, I now ask each of you to join me on stage so that the Chancellor and I may welcome you to the McMaster Community of Scholars. Ladies and gentlemen, so that each graduate's name may be heard, it would be appreciated if during the presentation of the graduates, you would hold your collective applause to the end of each degree category. Thank you. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Doctor of Philosophy. Rebecca Ann Plett. Raymond Bing Hong Chu. E. Louis. Shea Louis. Muhammad Abu Zahra.
Liu Fang Yao. Ala Al Kajila. Look clear. Caitlin Dibiki. Melissa Tanti. Nanthini Akila Sayangara Rajan. Danielle Wong. Dersem Kamil. Oleska Darshwish. Jacqueline Kirkham. Andrew Kioper. Jonathan L. Milvesky. Randall Jackson. Kathleen Ann Steves. <laughs> Fi Shu Yang. Sorry about that. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Business Administration. Janan El Hassini. Sadia Ali. Matthew Robert Andalaro. Muhammad Mahmoud Ali Mahmoud Atallah. Tudor Berek. Louise Diane Chen. Anthony Cerelli. Kong Min Kelvin Chow. Mai Xuan Deng. John Edmund Deal. Ramsey Anthony Ildik. Sean Philip Everingham. Andrea Louise Galliardi. Natasha Givek Oglo. Albert Komatsubara. Mahboub Ladhani. Shetan Lakani. 
Tong Lee. Martin Peter Moline. Yusra Munawar. Sayed Shakir Nazir. Jonathan Charles Jr. Brinsel. Fahad Rashid. Ryan Robello. Mika Harry Samueli Sartinen. Christine Sutherland. Ashutosh Vashista. Adam Vespi. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Finance. Menji Bian. Shinyi Sheng. Dia Sheng Tong. Lingting Dong. Rui Du. Yan Setagong Gu. Ki Li. Xiao Xiao Liu. Jie Ying Ren. Anki Wang. Rui Shu. <laughs> Shishen Zheng. Wei Zheng. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Health Management. Malgorzata Traeto. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Arts. Elewa Berube. Fiona Del Rio. Joshua Wilfred Manitowabi. Alison Oliphant. Sophie Ellen Riley. Osmin Ahmed. Kaylee Bateman. Michael Bradley Beatty. Nina Camilleri. Brittany Lee Hillier Green. Jade Bonnie Lalonde. 
Ian McEwlan. Luis Fernando Navarro del Angel. Paula Pimentel Daidone. Carly Elizabeth Thackeray. Whitney Thompson. Kimberly Marie Tyndale. Coralie Zaza. Chrysula Benak. Sarah de Montigny. Angela Melissa May Herring Lauzon. Graham Christopher Dobbs. Alyssa M. Drost. Antonella Fidanza. Vladimir Smiljanic. Tabitha Gwen Joan Bondi Post. Tanisha Marie Graham. Melissa Ann Montanari. That was Vanessa Nino. Alexander James Salas. Amanda Marie Joan Thompson. <laughs> Chanel Lucille Marie Belangerie. Melissa Kim Chan Fee. Sarah Garcia. Andrea Porn. Hesam Scott Salolbi. Monica Salib. Nyla Sangrar. Adam Waters. Katawe Katrina Henry. Anna Micah Irving. Helen Benny. Beatrice Beshi. Maria Nikita Cataluna. Salma El Zamel. Loretta Janes. Ryan Stefan Markusik. Christina Rose Mara. Sydney Miles. Najiba Sardar. Kin Win Tran. Michaela Joy Van Pelt. St Melanie Zetusian. Patricia Lee Barlow. Catherine Jane Dyer. Rachel Corinne Estock. 
Sasha Johnston. Samantha Angela Rossi. Sarah Bailey. Charles Duncan Chambers. Jenna Elizabeth Gloadzo. Mitchell J. Hawkoff. William Douglas Kearney. Kaylee Danielle Layton. Miriam Lewis Martins. Alexandra Catherine Zavarizi. Frishta Bastan. James Alexander McDonald. Jordan Maciel Anthony Mota. Val Music. Johnny Zara Rachel Sinico. Zayad Same, uh, sorry, Zayad Same El Nabolsi. Sarah Grace Kanko. Andrew David Levine. Christina Marie Rothwell. Sarah Catherine Conway. Alexander Edwin Janak. Cassandra Lowen. Victoria Musial. Alexander Daniel Piccini. Esther Shin. Jaskiran Shoker. Martina Maria Sikanovitz. John William Storozinski. Nida Ali. Simon William Mark Zeldin. Kyla Belisario. Alexa Francesca Conforti. Christopher Adam Gazzola. Maria Ginnick. Chantal Godin. Troy Samuel Hawkins. Alyssa Jessica Hollinger. Haley Michelle Hopkins. Megan Kathleen Innes. Gire Josephine Jonathan. Elora Jones. Clayton Troy Labatt. Joshua Ethan Scott. Vanessa Michelle Theron. Sherrod Benaby. <laughs> Melissa Cameron.
Joseph Anthony De Lazari. Arun Jacob. Ryan Christopher Johnston. Michael Lowry. Taylor Sky Elizabeth Khan. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Communications Management. Josie Cassano Rizzuti. Sarah Leanne Goldvine. Gerald Mack. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Science. Michael Greencorn. Fariha Shahed Rana. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Social Work. Blake John Anderson. Heather Kaylin Bamsey. Justin Ryan Johnstone. <laughs> Teresa Elizabeth Kozak. <laughs> Niu Leah. Monique Pitt. Tegan Rooney. Rebecca May Sepper. Samantha Terry. <laughs> Annalie Leeson. Daryl Kevin Martin. Jennifer Moulet. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Arts Honors. Theophilus Abram. Tabas Arife, Mark Jason Valerio Andrada, Kyle Peter Billy, Marissa Bremner. Luisa Fernanda Caro Arroyave. Adam Mitchell Cheravelli. Lorencia Cabeno. Michael Cocomelo. 
Connor Davis. Taylor Lexi Dayton. Yanish Dahlia. Gurveer Singh Desi. Alexandra Ferrara. Katrina Friesen. Daniel Liam Gadu. Sebal Ariya Gebru. Shuit Ariya Gebru. Rachel Ann Harper. Gerald Chukayabuka Ibe. <laughs> Anissa Jamal. Shlaka Jetta. Kathia Kanakazabi. Ruchika Karnani. Mayin Khan. Saba Khan. Carolyn Kovach. Hudi Krausch. Christina Kunert. Jason Lau. Joey Chung Yi Lee. Patricia Enrico Laura. Diana Lofty. Anushe Maksud. Derek Lyle Marchuka. Nishana Miriam Pile. Alexandra Martin. Dominique Daniela Martin. Sarah Masati. Luke Menick. Yasmin Shantik Moncrief. Kayla Small. Sneha Moraz. Nicole Isabel Morris. Christopher Justin Morit. Warda Mutabazi. <laughs> Haley P. Nobili. Agagazino Oki. <laughs> Cornelia Palczewski. Ratha Amy Palaja. Maria Jessica Andrea Perucho. Jacob Daniel Pukar. Cindy Ramsaran. Connor Mitchell Reinick. Rachel Louise Roberts. Alexander Rockingham. Kezia Royer Burkett. Camilo Sanchez Galindo. Darcy Edward Schnarr. Rafid Shadman. Carly Siciliano. 
Julia Siegel. Sandara Siamando. Nancy Ting. Madeline Claire Thompson. Nicole Vazarevich. Carly Villanueva. Valentina Vitali. Amanda Waite. Charles Singh Wallace. Paige Wireman. John Les Wojcik. Catherine Elizabeth Zog. Lisa Marie Ziegler. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Arts and Bachelor of Social Work. Adrian O'Sullivan. Grace Machiak. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Commerce Honors. Sajid Marzouk Ali. Andrew Ogo Oluwa Argehan. Jeffrey Adrian Ball. Benny Lahat Ragubir. George Rascio Calzerato. Marco Kukari. Jake Miles Crossley. Shanna De Valentin. Neil Jin. Tiano Wong. Rahil Khalak. Ariana Akiko Kitagawa. Chu Chun Hen Brandon Lai. Tingui Li. Chuck Pang Li. Methat Malik. Nicholas McFarlane. Sharano Hari Muna. Uduma Okon Okpo. Jackie Fung. Ivan Richardson. Kaide Monica Shimanuki. Apinas Zevanthan. Alison Elizabeth Smith. Rebecca Nicole Snarry. Calvin So. Nicholas Jean Speopolis. 
Amna Talat. Sherry Tang. Jack Wallace Ted. Benjamin George Underwood. Nicole Van Buzikom. Tan Fung Wong. Wen Tao Zhang. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree of Bachelor of Commerce. Victoria Cairo. Darren McKenzie Head. Jay Shi. Christopher George Novakis. Omer Razak. Paolo Santarosa. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduate of the degree, Bachelor of Arts and Science Honors. Ryan Daniel Bove Stevenson. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Arts. Angelica Ruth Batak. Oscar Borzyminski. Zoe Lindsay Brocklebank. Glenn Stephen Brown. Matthew Amedeo Caprara. Hongling Chang. Rebecca Lynn De Jong. Arshdeep Daliwal. <laughs> Harminder Singh Dami. Amanda Marianne Emmanuel. Wen Yi Fang. Anam Fatma. Lily Ferguson. Carly Ann Findlay. Courtney Alexandra Frazeo. Sheree Alexandra Friesen. Taylor Marie Glenn. Khalil McCaif Griffiths. Catherine Hall. Luisa Fernanda Henao. Nicolette Clavel Herrera. Edward Hu. Gregory Patrick Adam Jandrisic. 
Rosina Johnston. Monisha Kaura. Jennifer Lamb. Lee Luo. Taylor McLennan. Justin McLeod. Thomas Ashley McNaughton. Samira Malik. Myla Martin. Nosuelo Maseco. Diana Mednikova. Luciano Meleka. Mitchell Anthony Montini. Ndinda Msiska. Allison Munji. Savannah Oaks. Rawan Omar. Vithuga Premkumar. Thomas Joseph Radigan. Stephanie Rasanen. Eric J. Santer. Victoria Page Scheibley. Francis Xavier Shema. Christine Taylor. Roxana Temurian. Parika Tawari. Abil Tokai. Brittany Justine Tovstiga. Tony Truong. Safara Grace Whiteley Hofflner. Let's give one more round of applause to all of the new graduates of the class of 2017. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, it now gives me a great pleasure to introduce Dr. Kaylin Debicki a PhD graduate student in English and Cultural Studies uh, who will be delivering the valedictory address. Sego, <laughs> Sawaguego. <laughs> Good morning, everyone. Good morning, McMaster graduates, Chancellor Labarge, President Dean and Provost Ferrar, honored guests, faculty, family, and friends. Thank you all for being here today, for coming together in this celebratory moment. My name is Caitlin Debicki. I am Mohawk Wolf Clan from the Six Nations of the Grand River. 
It is an honor to welcome you all here today to the Dish With One Spoon Territories. I've come to congratulate you, to celebrate our shared success, but also to tell a story. In the oral history of my people, the Haudenosaunee, we have um, a story about the peacemaker who founded our, our nations. Uh, a long time ago, our nations were very violent towards one another. We were in the midst of a war. We had no respect for one another, and there was no end to the violence and the blood feuds. We had forgotten what it means to be human. The peacemaker came amongst our nations, and over years, some say hundreds of years, he helped them to straighten their minds, to recover what they'd lost. Their vision of creation as love, their love for themselves and for each other. He helped them recover their reason, to remember that every reasonable person has the desire for peace. He helped them to recover their ability to communicate, to speak clearly to one another about their grievances, to reason with one another. He helped them to recover what we call ganika leo, the good mind. This helped the people to recover peace within themselves and between their nations. This peace made the people strong. They became a confederacy founded on principles of peace. And this is the Six Nations, a confederacy that exists to this day, a confederacy whose strength has persisted through hundreds of years of difficulties and challenges, including attempted genocide. This then is a story of hope, a story that says that nations who have fallen into seemingly unbreakable patterns of hatred, trauma, and grief can find a way back to peace. And this is where I see all of us today as having responsibilities. We have just dedicated years to learning, to developing our reasonable minds. And to quote Stan Lee from Spider-Man, with great power comes great responsibility. So as we go forward from here, from today, I would ask you to continue to humbly and bravely walk a path of learning, not only from each other, but also from the creation that surrounds you. And I charge you with finding love for yourself, the kind that sees and affirms you as a whole being, the kind that lets you put aside fear of judgment, fear of failure, fear of inadequacy, or even the need for praise. I am still in the early stages of this particular learning journey, but so far I have found that offering kindness to others helps me to be kind to myself. I would ask you to use your reason to foster a good mind, to find and offer to yourself and others compassion, kindness, honesty, and integrity, to speak out against ugliness, inequity, and violence, to believe in the possibilities of good relationships based upon a common desire for peace. It is essential that at a time like this, when our differences are being made so visible, so volatile, so violent, that we use our reason and our good minds to recall for ourselves and each other that desire for peace. This is what will bring strength to our relationships. This is what will bring strength to our communities. And let me tell you, I would not be standing here if it weren't for the strength of my communities, both the indigenous ones into which I was born and the non-indigenous ones in which I was raised as an adoptee. What got me through the self-doubt, the anxiety, the pain and loss and anger and confusion, so much confusion, not only in my education journey but also in my life were the people. The people who I chose as my family, who I gathered around me as my community, who see me for who I am, who believe in me and who have endlessly devoted their energy to me and the possible futures that I might help to build. Without the constant support, encouragement, forgiveness and love of my family, friends, mentors, teachers, students, ancestors, and the land itself, none of what I have worked so hard for would have been possible. At any given time, at this very moment, I am connected to an extended web of kinship that buoys me, and that in turn allows me to lift up others. So I ask you to consider your own communities, the people and places and beings who love and care for you and whom you love and care for, and wherever you go next, whatever you do next, attend to those relationships, deepen them, and develop new ones. Because I believe in this era which is saturated with talk of both intolerance and reconciliation, 
Face-to-face -face relationships and sincere connections with others are vitally important. Everyone here is going to have to join the conversation about Indigenous peoples in Canada. None of us can sit this one out if we want to build a healthy, vibrant future together, here. So I ask you to consider the communities of the future, those coming faces of young people who will walk the same halls as you and sit beneath the same trees and move through this place in their own way just as you have. Please consider that some of those faces will come to come will struggle. Some of them will face prejudice and ignorance and feel unwelcomed here. For their sakes, I would ask you to consider, all of you students, faculty, staff, administrators, and guests, what can we build together with our reasonable minds in the name of peace that will make a difference for the next seven generations? We spend a lot of time here learning how to deconstruct, how to criticize and tear down. And there are good merits in those skills. Thinking critically is so important. But equally, or perhaps even more importantly, is a building up. It takes courage to create. It takes vulnerability to offer the world something you've poured your own self into. But please, please do. Because our communities, our nations, and our world needs healing, and we can't do that only by tearing things down. So I hope you'll join me in thinking about not only what kinds of employment we might seek, but also what kinds of purpose we might discover and fulfill in sharing our gifts with others. Nyao Goa, thank you so much, and congratulations. Thank you, Caitlin. May I now introduce Anna D'Angela, a 2013 arts and science graduate and a 2017 MBA graduate. Anna is a representative of the McMaster Alumni Association and will now present the Distinguished Alumni Award for the Arts category, and then she will deliver the Alumni Association Address. The recipient of the 2017 McMaster University Distinguished Alumni Award is Patricia Demers. <laughs> Patricia Demers is a two-time McMaster graduate who has become one of Canada's most respected and decorated literary scholars. A Hamilton native, Dr. Demers attended her hometown university and earned her Bachelor's of Arts degree in English and French in 1968, and then her Master's degree in 1971. She completed her PhD at the University of Ottawa and began teaching as a sessional instructor at the University of Alberta, where she now holds the title of Distinguished University Professor. Previously, she served as Chair of the Department of English and Film Studies and as Associate Dean of Graduate Studies. She is also one of the university's most awarded teachers, having collected the University of Alberta Rutherford Award for Excellence in Undergraduate Teaching, the Arts Faculty Teaching Award, the McCalla Research Professorship Award, and the prestigious University Cup, the University of Alberta's highest faculty honor. A leading literary scholar, Dr. Demers has pursued a, pursued a diverse research program that includes important work on early modern women's writing, Shakespearean and Jacobean drama, feminist hermeneutics, and children's literature. Her published scholarly works includes Instruction to Delight, Children's Literature to 1850, and A Garland for the Golden Age, both anthologies of children's literature. Her critical publications include Women as Interpreters of the Bible, The World of Hannah More, Heaven Upon Earth, The Form of Moral and Religious Children's Literature to 1850, Louis Amon's Marie Sha Maria Chapdelaine and Women's Writing in English, Early Modern England. Dr. Demers, who has served as Vice President of the Social Sciences and Humanities Research Council, was the first female president of the Royal Society of Canada. 
In 2008, she was the recipient of the Canadian Association of University Teachers Sarah Shorten Award for contributions to the advancement of women in Canadian post-secondary education. She also chaired the Royal Society Expert Panel on the Future Now, Canada's Libraries, Archives, and Public Memory. Dr. Demers is a fellow of the Royal Society of Canada, the recipient of the Queen Elizabeth II Diamond Jubilee Medal, and since 2016, a member of the Order of Canada. McMaster is very proud to recognize Dr. Patricia Demers of the class of 68 and 71 with the 2017 Distinguished Alumni Award. Congratulations. And now the alumni address. Chancellor LaBarge, President Dean, McMaster faculty, fellow alumni, honored guests, and especially members of the McMaster class of 2017. Not long ago, I was in the audience here at Convocation instead of on the stage. And even having gone through this twice, I have to admit Hamilton Place looks very different and much bigger and much more scary standing at this podium and facing all of you. But I want to say to the newest uh, members of the McMaster Alumni Association, welcome to the Mac Alumni family on behalf of more than 180,000 members who have come before you. It's a big, diverse group, and I know you're going to fit in just fine. Right now, you might feel like there's no real reason to stay involved uh, to the Alumni Association, but there is. Especially in your first few years after graduation, the association can do a lot for you. For example, our Mac 10 program provides social activities, career assistance, as well as online and in-person networking. And we've even added a mentoring program that gives you access to the wisdom of hundreds of fellow MAC grads and career services programs that include advice and support from your very own alumni career counselor as you start your own careers. Not to worry, you'll be getting emails from Chris and Scott who coordinate these programs. And this is where you'll learn more about MAC 10 and other alumni programs. So pick and choose the ones that mean the most to you. The association can do everything from connecting you to an alumni hangout in a new city to helping you get a great deal on insurance for your first car or apartment. And having gotten my first apartment insurance through the association, I can attest that you get a great deal. I won't run through every opportunity the association provides. There's way more information at mac10.ca and in our emails you'll be getting. Um, plus, I hope as Mac grads, and I know that your research abilities are top notch. But instead, let me finish by encouraging you to stay connected. You'll receive MAC, the alumni news magazine, and Maroon Mail, our e-newsletter, and you can also be a part of the association's communities on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, and Instagram. So please keep in touch. I hope your relationship with McMaster continues beyond the moment you return your graduation gown, and the university is part of your progress, your story, and your life for a very long time. This is just your beginning. Know that we may not always be there with you, but Mac will always be there for you. So congratulations on your accomplishment. Enjoy this great day, and welcome to the McMaster Alumni Association. Thank you, Anna. May I now invite Dr. Dean back to the podium to deliver his president's address. Thank you very much, Madam Chancellor, distinguished guests, respected colleagues, graduates, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, before I start this, I should say there has been no collusion between me and other speakers who have come before me on the platform today, but you will, you will discern in what I have to say certain recurring themes. About 18 months ago, from this same podium, I spoke to a graduating class such as yours, about the nature of the relationship between education and society. That occasion was informed by the final report of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission of Canada, which had recently appeared. And I wanted graduates to understand that the dark history of residential schools in this country was profoundly relevant to them, not only as human beings for whom the suffering of others must always be relevant, but as the beneficiaries 
of a quality education and as the educators of the future. While education, understood in the abstract as the cultivation of human potential, must always be a good thing, one cannot say the same for the institutions through which societies seek to educate their members. One lesson of the residential schools is that when education becomes deliberate acculturation, it can be antithetical to the well-being of individuals and thwart their potential. Instead of building healthy communities characterized by diversity and respect for difference, such institutions compel homogeneity and encourage intolerance. They serve the political interests of the state rather than the good of society, if I can put it that way. That universities exist to serve society and the state has been taken for granted in the Western Academy, at least since the 18th century, when the belief in the value of building great public universities took hold in Germany and spread to North America. In the United States, the Moral Acts of 1862 and 1890 established the so-called land-grant universities for the public good, providing instruction in what was called agriculture and the mechanic arts, which would bring immediate economic benefit to the community, as well as education in the traditional liberal arts and sciences, which would empower the individual and in the long term redound to the benefit of society at large. The Canadian university system is overwhelmingly a public system. The country's top 15 research universities, amongst which, as you heard earlier on, McMaster ranks first for research intensity, are all public institutions, deriving significant operating revenues from the public purse and established under provincial legislation or in at least two significant cases, Royal Charter. 80% of all university research conducted in Canada occurs on U15 campuses at a value of about $8.5 billion a year. Those 15 universities confer more than 75% of all PhD degrees awarded in Canada, and they therefore provide the bulk of the country's research and development labor pool and they contribute more than $36 billion to the Canadian economy every year. These figures tell you two things about the system from which you're about to graduate. One is that a consensus exists in this country that higher education is vitally important for the national good and therefore worthy of public support at all levels. And the other is that those of us privileged to work and study in these institutions have an obligation to mobilize what we have learned and what we have discovered for the good of our communities. And just as we derive moral as well as material support from our city, region, province, and country, the benefits of our work should accrue in each of those spheres as well. And here is where I begin to echo some of the words of your valedictorian. My hope today is that you will pause to think about the idea of community, about particular communities, such as the one you come from, the ones you've been a part of during your time at McMaster, the one you joined by becoming a McMaster alumnus, the others you will enter when you leave here, and also about how you can best take your lessons learned and the skills developed in this community and turn them to the benefit of your new and future ones. I made a distinction earlier between community, society, and the state, and I implied that although educators and public educational institutions have obligations to all three, their relations with the state as a political entity can be seriously problematic, indeed, sometimes hazardous to the integrity of their mission. And that is where the doctrine of academic freedom intervenes. As Wilhelm von Humboldt, credited as the great architect of the modern research university, wrote in 1810, the state must understand that intellectual work will go infinitely better without it. 
Because, by and large, such an understanding does prevail in Canada, universities enjoy a comparatively high degree of autonomy and have been able to establish themselves as privileged communities that are both places of learning and an ongoing experiment in social formation. By that, I mean the following. By virtue of being self-governing, largely unencumbered by the challenges of non-academic communities, bound together by a clear and compelling mission, and afforded certain protections by society in order to do the work that society needs to have done, university communities have the potential to, modern, to model a kind of social ideal. That is why institutions like McMaster commit themselves to progressive social values, to equity and inclusion, to democratic and collegial processes, mutual respect linked to freedom of expression and to the freedom to protest. All commitments which on the one hand understood to be necessary for optimal learning and discovery and on the other, the least that is owed by the university to the community at large in acknowledgement of the privileged place which such institutions enjoy in the social and economic fabric of the country. From that laboratory then, emerge graduates like yourselves and innovations and insights of all kinds that will help the world beyond the university become better and brighter. I noted earlier that McMaster was recently recognized as Canada's most research intensive university and many of you graduating this morning will have had a role in the groundbreaking research that is conducted in our institution every day. Your professors are world experts in a wide range of fields and are dedicating themselves to solving the world's greatest challenges from antibiotic resistance and cardiovascular disease, respiratory illness, autism and diabetes, to climate change, to globalization, and the need for alternative energy sources. In the McMaster nuclear reactor, scientists are developing nuclear tools for medical diagnosis and treatment. They are providing the world's largest supply of radioisotopes for the treatment of prostate cancer and they are assaying turbine engine blades for every passenger jet operating in North America. And now, thanks to a number of very generous gifts from our Chancellor, McMaster has become a leading venue for the study and mitigation of a human challenge none of us can escape, aging. That is appropriate, given also that our home, our university, is home to some of the world's largest cohort studies in health following communities in this country and around the world to examine patterns in health and wellness from conception to death. In all of these areas, and many others besides, the McMaster community is serving the national and global community beyond its walls. Social analysis and innovation born here is bringing benefit to communities elsewhere. Studies in culture and history are deepening the global understanding of what it is to be human. And creativity fostered on our campus ripples outwards, enriching life here and abroad. The work of McMaster, in short, is to advance the health and the well-being of human beings and communities in Canada and across the world. And that is a singular goal to which all our various disciplines con contribute and in service of which they come together. In closing, though, I want to talk about all of you as the critical means by which the work of this university community is mobilized to help create a brighter world. As I've already noted, many of you have played important roles in the research enterprise here at McMaster, and in that sense, you've already made an impact especially if you've been involved in community-engaged research. Probably more of you have had the benefit of experiential learning opportunities in the Hamilton community, co-op and clinical placements, internships, service learning, and so on, through which I hope you have come to understand the extent to which your personal growth and prosperity has a symbiotic relationship 
with the evolving health and well-being of society at large. That is the main point I wish to leave with you today. Despite my having noted several times that universities enjoy a privileged position to some extent apart from the communities in which they reside, it is a fact that whatever privileges they enjoy are conferred upon them by society. Universities have autonomy because society believes it is important that they do so, not because it is their right or because it has been ordained from on high, but because the complex ecosystem within which personal fulfillment and community progress are held together requires it. Take care to remember that you are part of that ecosystem something that is not necessarily easy to do on celebratory occasions like this, when standing out from the crowd is a measure of success. There are more than 1.7 million students studying in Canada this year in 96 universities. If you consider that overall only 28% of adults in this country have a university education, graduates like yourselves are joining a minority segment of the population. Furthermore, you're graduating from an elite institution. You heard from Dr. Lazzarato that the university is currently ranked 66th out of approximately 24,000 universities worldwide and stands thus in the top 1% globally. All of this means that you are today graduating with an enormous personal advantage. And compared to the majority of your peers in this country and across the globe, the odds of success are very much stacked in your favor. It is vital to remember, however, that while your success reflects very positively on your individual abilities and talents, your success is also a communal triumph. It has been made possible by the many communities of which you are a part beginning with your families and friends, extending into your school as well as this university community, and outwards into the global community, where tragically, the success of some comes at a price that must be paid by others. It is only reasonable then to ask you as you leave this place to see your personal fortune as inseparable from and forever dedicated to the communal good. We are immensely proud of you, and we have great faith in your ability to make this a brighter world. Thank you very much. Congratulations to the class of 2017. As a fellow McMaster alumni, I'm looking forward to seeing where all of you go from here. I think it's interesting as you join, as, as Ms. D'Angelo pointed out, as you now join the McMaster community, today more than any other day that I've been on this podium, you can see the range and the quality of the alumna that we have. Whether it's our distinguished uh, alumna, whether it's our honorary degree recipient, or your valedictorian. You've got to be proud to be part of a group that includes people like that. And all of them gave you some very good advice, and I want to build a little bit on what, on what President Dean said, because you are going out into a community, and as he said, you are part of a community, and you've had several communities um, throughout your life that have contributed to where you are today. And I just want to make a point, though, is because today we aren't celebrating you as a community. We are celebrating you as individuals who have each accomplished something unique. And although you can say, but I couldn't have done it without my family, you're right. I couldn't have done it without my friends, you're right. I couldn't have done it without the professional staff, the professors I dealt with, you're right. But if you personally hadn't taken responsibility for learning from them, for working hard, you wouldn't be standing here. And so I want to congratulate each one of you individually because it is as individuals you will form a different community going forward. 
and the advice that you've gotten from the various speakers today will stand you in very good stead. But as I say, I think you're a marvelous group and I want, as again, thank you each, congratulate you each individually as well as for the class of 2017. Now, I have a couple of housekeeping items to tell you about before we close. And I would ask that you remain standing at your seats until the academic procession and the graduates have left the hall. Finally, please join now in the singing of our national anthem. After the singing of the anthem, this convocation stands adjourned.